Growing up as a child in Mexico, I felt different compared to everybody, and I carried that with me. When we moved back to the United States, I started getting bullied a lot. I started getting in a lot of fights. I started trying to suppress my anger. I started learning suppressing my anger is actually worse because when I blow up, I blow up. I beat somebody up and I wound up paying the price because I was facing 30 years to life for kidnapping, assault with a deadly weapon, and attempted murder. And my bail was over a million dollars. But miraculously, I got let go. All my charges were dropped and I got set free. Now that I got married with my husband, we started the party scene. That's when our lifestyle was just drugs and drinking. We had been partying. I went to bed at 1.30 in the morning. I woke up. I had a heavy habit at that time, so I thought, hey, I could go get a quick kit right now. I went to the garage. When I walked in there, I saw my wife half clothed and my cousin naked and and he's yelling his wits out, what's going on here, what happened? I couldn't react. My first instincts, I wanted to go back to the way I was and start attacking, but something was holding me back. I didn't do anything. I just went into a deeper depression again. About two months later, she told me there was things going on that I didn't know about between her and my cousin still. And then that's when everything just blacked out. I went in the house and I started attacking him and I couldn't stop. I messed him up real bad and the only intention I had was to kill him. And then once again, that's when God came in because as I was just about to take his life, he just, he told me, let him go. He doesn't know better. It's not up to you to take his life. So I let him go. I felt I had to do this because it was the right thing, because of what was done to me. And that's when things just changed, because I was asking myself a question, what else is there? Because the next day when we went talking at the park, there was a little schoolhouse that kept popping out to me. It's right around the corner from the park. I asked her, what's that little daycare place? And that's when she told me, it's church. <laughs> It's, it's a Christian church. So we made a visit that Sunday. We walked in there, I'm looking around. I see these huge words on, on the wall. Come as you are, and it's okay now to be okay. Seeing these words really hit me because I started looking at everybody and I see some people with flip flops, and I see some people with shorts, and I'm here dressed up with khakis and nice shirt and trying to look my best when everything wasn't right. And then we saw a video of a lady that changed her life for God. She had an anklet on and she was wanted to get baptized. But sadly, she couldn't get her anklet wet. It was like five of you guys picked her up, held her foot out of the water, and she got to get baptized. And that's the moment where I said, I want to be baptized. I want to be part of everything. I want to let God into my life. And in March, we got the opportunity to get baptized. Before it was, I knew God, of God. I believed in Him, but now I was starting to know Him. Before Christ, my life was an illusion of always being put together, always happening. And now, I allow my, my feelings to show. There is no illusion. This is God. <laughs> I was incomplete. My missing piece was Jesus in my life. He's, he's truly, he's changed our lives. We're so thankful for everything. <laughs>